So this is just a small refresher on right hand fingering for classical guitar. Um, I already have a four part video series on how to deal with right hand fingering in your music and the, the different terminologies and aspects involved in choosing fingerings. But today I'm just going to do a small refresher of some of those ideas. And it's just a common question that I get asked a lot on YouTube and, and through the site. So I'll link to that, that previous uh, four part lesson series um, in the description. So go check out that, that larger lesson. But today, you know, I'll talk about some reasons um, why people might have trouble with the right hand fingering in their music. Most classical guitar music, um, sh like 90% of it should just be like alternating fingers are common arpeggio patterns, things that you've studied in your technique and that feel ergonomic and feel um, natural things that you've done before and worked into your muscle memory through your technique practice. And then, you know, 10% of each score, there's always going to be a little oddity that you might have to write the fingerings in and you might have to practice them very specifically and just those couple small oddity sections. But the rest is should be common fingering that you don't really have to think about too much, um, but instead it's it's already in your muscle memory. Good technical habits are already in your muscle memory. So that's why uh, my scores don't have a lot of right hand fingering, but just pockets of fingering sometimes. Like if there's um, a specific solution that I think is good to a passage, maybe I'll, I'll throw that in occasionally. But putting fingering on every single note and littering the whole score with right hand fingering is kind of an unnecessary thing. It messes up the score. It makes it inflexible because there's usually a few options that you can do for each passage. Um, but it, it's also an issue with like students foundational training like they most fingering should be um, very natural to students if they're playing pieces that are at their their technical level. So let's talk about how we build up that those kinds of good habits. So one thing I do with my students is that in my technique book, um, yeah, we practice scales and arpeggios, but we, I also have those 100 open string exercises for the right hand. So on open strings, we go through scale fingerings and arpeggio fingerings and all sorts of um, different right hand patterns to lock in good habits in the right hand. Um, all technique books have this kind of material to some extent. Um, so my book kind of goes a little, it goes a little bit further with like 100 open string exercises, but I think it's really worth um, your time to, to explore um, good habits in your right hand technique so that um, when you approach your pieces, you can kind of just apply like whatever, whatever exercise you've practiced, you can apply one of those exercises to your music and say like, this one fits the music quite well. This other one that I practiced doesn't. You know, alternating fingers works really well for this passage. Oh, sweeping my thumb over a few strings works better for this particular musical passage that has oddities in it. So yeah, definitely check out your technique books and lock in your right hand technique. When you practice your technique, you want to make sure that you're practicing um, alternating scales. So, so scales with alternating fingering. So maybe it's I am, I am, I am, I am. So making sure your alternation is very natural and secure and you would you never slip up on that. But make sure you're also doing it with M-A. I think that people's MA fingering tends tends to be not as natural and not as secure, but it's incredibly important because in classical guitar music, the thumb and the index finger are often busy with the bass or an accompaniment line, so a lot of melody gets played with MA, so make sure you're practicing your MA scales. You could also practice three-fingered scales like M or like A M I A M I A M I. Um, Three-fingered scales are, are neglected a lot by guitarists as well, and I think learning to do that will also really help in your music because there's so often we we throw the A finger into the mix to to reach up to a note, and then we we continue with alternating I M afterwards. So just making sure that that feels really natural is really important, right? Um, and then of course, so that's your scale practice, and then of course um, arpeggios, right? You want to make sure that you've you've practiced a lot of different arpeggio patterns. You know, starting off with basic like P I M A P I M A patterns, but also then when you're doing multiple notes, 
what are you going to do? Are you going to do P-I-M-A-M-A? Or are you going to do P-P-P-I-M-A? Or are you going to do P-P-I-M-I-M? Or P-P-I-M-A-M? You know, there's so many choices that you can do, but if you've practiced your technique properly, then none of them should particularly bother you. You should be able to glide through all of them with a fair amount of legato, and it shouldn't matter too much which one you choose. Now, in classical guitar, we often identify things like awkward string crossings. So an awkward string crossing would be, for example, going I am I in an arpeggio, for example. You know, like that reaching of the I finger over the M finger is called an awkward string crossing. It's not that awkward, but sometimes in a fast, tight, tricky passage, it can make you trip up. However, remember, when you practice your scales, you do awkward string crossings all the time. I am I. There's one right off the bat. There's awkward string crossings. So the more you practice your technique and iron out your ability to play through awkward string crossings, um, the more you'll be able to play through your repertoire without having to finger every single little note. You can just play through the, any awkward string crossings that occur and use just alternating fingers for a, a large passage. Now, if it's complicated music, you might want to um, finger your music to avoid awkward string crossings. And that's a really good thing to do as well. You don't necessarily want to start a passage that goes, you know, if it goes E, B, E, B, E, B, you don't want to go I, M, I, M, I, M. There's no reason to do an awkward string crossing over and over. You'd rather do M, I, M, I, M, I, E, B, E, B, E, B, rather than I, M, I, M, I, M. So yeah, of course, you pick and choose, but in repertoire, it's not always even. It doesn't always do an equal number of repetitions. So you might have some... Um, regular string crossings that feel really good, but then it changes it up and you have one that's awkward. And then your choices are to um, throw in an, the A finger to, you know, to fix the, to fix it so that it's always ergonomic. Or you can just, for those little tiny pockets, play through the awkward string crossings if you've practiced your technique strong enough. And it all comes down to the context of what you're playing. In generally easy passages, you don't necessarily have to finger every single note to, be, to avoid awkward string crossings. If you've practiced your technique and you are a smooth and legato player, you can play through those passages just with alternating fingers without worrying about it at all. In other circumstances, um, you know, if it's particularly awkward, yeah, you will you might have to write in your fingerings in a few spots and, and make sure you end up with um, string crossings that are ergonomic. When it comes to arpeggios, there's always a lot of choices. You know, I just did a video for our Cassie's number 7, Opus 11. And so there's lots of options for that third bar. I do a regular arpeggio, so P I M A, followed by M A, P I M A M A, and then M A M A M. So a lot of M A work. So make sure you're practicing those M A scales. Um, but there's other options. You don't have to do it like that. I do it like that because it's like. I, I can think of it as our arpe normal arpeggio and then MA scale work. You know, I can just, I can think of it in that way. Normal arpeggio chunk, MA scale work chunk. And it's easy for me to just, because I've practiced that stuff so much, it's easy for me to just slap those two things onto that passage and not think about it too much. Um, another way you could do it though is sweep the thumb. Thumb, thumb, I, M. M. So you could do like a double sweet thumb and then just stay with I am fingering. So that's really interesting too. Sometimes um, those passages will make me have to practice them a little bit more because um, sometimes I like using MA on the top strings in an arpeggio passage because 
those fingers are closer to those strings, so it feels more ergonomic if I have a bass note that I have to play, instead of having to play P and I on the outer strings, which I don't like as much. So you can see though, like there's lots of ways to do the passage, but um, for me, slap those, those two different things on, normal arpeggio, MA scale work, plus the ergonomic fact that MA are closer to the upper strings, and there's a bass note in the middle, that makes me choose that particular fingering. So like I said, 90% of right hand fingering should just be your regular technique chunks that you can say, this chunk is this normal thing I do all the time. This chunk is that normal MA scale work that I do all the time. So you just slap those concepts onto your music and then maybe somewhere in the music, you'll have something that is, is more awkward, that doesn't fit the mix, but then you write in your, you write in your fingerings, make sure you choose good um, string crossings that are ergonomic, and then you're all set, you know, like, but you'll always probably have like 90% of the piece, really easy to slap on concepts, and then yeah, these little pockets of fingering that you have to choose. Sometimes there's no good decision, other times um, you just have to write it in and practice it. Um, but check out my other four videos on the concepts involved, but I think this refresher is really good for people because you don't want to be reading scores that are just littered with right hand fingerings. It's really hard to follow right hand fingerings for an entire score. That's like a, an extra element that you're, you'd be thinking about that you don't have to. It should be covered through your technique work and through the natural muscle memory that you've built up while you were building up the foundation of your technique. If you need any help with your technique, um, I would recommend that you check out my, my technique book and you go through those 100 open string exercises. It's a great opportunity to just get that right hand all worked out.